Hey guys, welcome. So it is time <clears throat> I talk about surgery, recovery, and all that fun stuff. So I made a video talking about how I needed to have surgery about like maybe three, four weeks ago. And like, alhamdulillah, like so many people flooded in with like their support and their duas, and I was like, oh my gosh, alhamdulillah, like that really helped so much. You guys have no idea how much your duas and your support helped like through this whole process. So I want to thank everybody who gave their support. And then some people were saying how I shouldn't have the surgery, how I should, um, you know, look at the Quran and Sunnah and trust that Allah um, could take it away, like using these prophetic um, herbal-like medicines. And it's like, I really appreciate you guys giving me the alternative. Um, but when looking at our options, we decided to make Issachara and felt that surgery was our best one. It's not like we just didn't think about it. Like my dad was very, was very like stern on making sure there were alternative ways, you know, other than surgery. But for me, I felt like surgery was the best option. So thank you for giving me all these other options. Um, but surgery was the best option for me, I believe. So alhamdulillah. Um, now... Like I talked about before, I had to have surgery because I had a huge ovarian cyst. And originally, my doctor told me I had a fist, uh, a fist, well, a cyst filled with blood, which usually occurs every menstrual cycle. Um, so I was like, okay, cool. Uh, it's just it's not going away. Two years ago, I had a dermoid cyst on my right ovary, and that is something that you're born with. So I'm thinking I had a cyst filled with blood, but come surgery time, and you know my doctor takes it out. It's it turns out it's a dermoid cyst again, filled with blonde hair. So I just have a whole bunch of cysts in my body that I'm born with, and it's just growing slowly over time. But we'll talk about that a little bit. So first, I want to talk about what to expect when you're having a laparoscopic uh, surgery. So I was told I was going to have to have laparoscopic cystectomy, possible oophorectomy, possible open surgery, which means that I have to take a cyst out, maybe take an ovary out, maybe open up my whole stomach. I don't know. We'll see. Funny thing though, when I was getting ready for surgery, about 20 minutes in, like 20 minutes uh, before actually hitting the surgery room, my doctor comes out like, yo girl, guess what? We might have to take a fallopian tube. And I was like, doc, what? Why are you going to pop this on me like 20 minutes before I have to go into surgery though? She was like, I was in the shower and I was thinking like, dang though, what if her, sur what if her, what if her sister's in the, in the fallopian tube? Do we got to take it out? And I was like, oh. Dang, man, you're gonna drop that on me like right now? Like right now, right now? And I was like, okay, fine. Can I have kids still? She's like, yeah. I was like, okay, fine. Take it out then. Take it. Take what you need. So, but I was like, you know what? Allah got me. I make this dua. Whatever happens, happens, you know? So, um, they gave me medicine, me medicine, well, they gave me medicine before surgery. Just so, because um, you take it anesthesia, you're going to get nauseous and stuff like that. They're like, this, hopefully this medicine will help with that. Um, it's going to make you super tired. So even before surgery, I was about to knock out. Like, they're carting me into the room and like, I'm basically sleeping already. So I get inside the room and then the anesthesiologist is like, yo, I'm about to hit you with this anesthesia. I'm like, I can't even talk, but I'm thinking like, bro, I'm about to be knocked out already. Like, do I even need anesthesia? So I feel the anesthesia is going through the IV. The first time I didn't have anesthesia with the IV, I had it like in a, like a, a breath thing. So I had a countdown. So this time I had it with the with the um with the IV and like I felt that. Like I felt this huge like wave come over me. Like I just took like four Benadryl pills and I was knocked out. I wake up about two hours later and the doctor's in my face, like, girl, look at this picture. It's your huge dermoroid cyst with blonde hair. And I'm like do I still have my ovary? She's like, yeah, you do. And then I had knocked out again. I woke up uh, another hour and a half later and I'm wearing a green, I'm wearing a green uh, um, a surgical suit. When I was in surgery, I was wearing a purple surgical suit. So I'm thinking to myself, like, whoa, when did I change my clothes? <laughs> I don't remember that. So I'm like, excuse me, nurse. Excuse me. When did I change my clothes? And she was like, oh, we did it for you. And I'm like, oh, that's a little weird. So I was just naked completely. And okay, cool. Um, that's 
cool. So um, now that I'm okay with the fact that I'm wearing this green surgical throw, I mean, robe, I see this purple thing on this table and I'm looking at it. I was looking at it for a long time. I'm just thinking to myself, like, why is that purple thing there? What purpose does that serve? So I called the nurse over again. I was like, excuse me, nurse, excuse me. Um, what is that purple thing there? But you know, I, was, I sounded more drugged out. And she's like, oh, that was your pillow. And I was like, oh, thank you. You're so kind, that makes so much sense. I was so polite. And then I'm sitting there and I'm like, hold up, if they changed my clothes, does that mean that they took my surgical cap off? So I'm like feeling, and I'm like, oh no. And I'm like, nurse, nurse, I need to cover my hair. I need, <laughs> I need to cover my hair. So she gives me this blanket. She's like, would you like a warm blanket to wrap around you? And I'm like, that would be so nice of you. So she gives me this blanket and then like knock out again. But then I get up and the doctor, I mean the nurses are like, so would you like to go home? Would you like to stay another hour? And I'm like, nah, man, I'm trying to be home. Y'all changing clothes and taking off my surgical cap? Nah, man, I'm trying to be home. So I'm like, no, nah, I'll go home. They're like, okay, well, here's your clothes. Go ahead, get dressed. We'll cart you off to, um, cart you off to your car where your husband and your family is. So I'm putting my stuff on, I'm like putting my pants on, and I just remember like a Dr. Seuss theme, like one foot, two foot, red foot, blue foot. But I was like one leg, two leg, three leg, four leg, five leg, and I kept going on until I had my pants on. I think I only got to five or six legs, but yeah. Um, so I got dressed, and I was like extremely nauseous. Like I was so, I, I'd never been so nauseous in my life. Like it was horrible. So I asked for a bag, and I was super dizzy, so they're putting me in the wheelchair, and then um, um, I get carted off to my car, I get in the car, extremely nauseous, but I rolled down the windows from a lot, and windows and air helps with nausea, apparently, so that was cool. So and then uh, I get home, and for the remaining time, I'm pretty much asleep. I wake up every couple hours, walk around a little bit, and go back to sleep. For the first like three days I had like no appetite. I had like watermelon and fruit. Um, but my stomach was filled with gas because when they do the surgery they pump your, your stomach with gas so they can they, they move around a lot. So um, that was painful because it's like you feel this pressure, you're constipated, you can't pass gas. It's just horrible. So that pretty much lasts for the whole two weeks in recovery. So that's annoying. Um, what else? I feel like it's basically the surgery. It was like real quick and I mean, I'm still in recovery. It's only been a week, but um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it of the surgery. Um, yeah, talk about your derm, did that thing game. Mm, yep, so I think that's it. Okay, yeah, that's it. Uh, if I leave anything out, I'm gonna put it in the description. Until next time.